Yo, 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 what's going on? This is the NOC, the Nerds of Color. We are back with another show, pal show. I am the Babinka boy, the Tocino Terminator, Kuyapi, a.k.a. Patrick Michael Strange, and I'm back with the Lechon ladies, the amazing Ates, Catafork, and Viva Valentina. What's up, lady? Hey. <laughs> Doing good. We got our boba. Hey! Like, oh, ready. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, I'm just, I just got the water going on. I should have got a little something extra. Because we got a popping one today, y'all. To match yeah. with the boba, pop, boba <laughs> popping. Um, tremendous communications. Uh, I've met her through the great group headed by Jeremiah Abraham. Shout out to Jeremiah. Uh, she hooked us up with uh, some of our previous guests, Rosalind Cobrubius and Romy Marquez uh, over at ABS-CBN and Collective Hustle. But I found out that, yo, this girl has some hustle to herself. So when checked out some of her work and I was like, yo, yeah, we need to have her on. Please welcome Ashley Rapuano. I think I'm brutalizing the name. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ashley, what's up, girl? Rapuano's fine. That works. <laughs> so how do we pronounce your name? So we, we get Rapuano. Name. Rapuano. Mm -hmm. Am I pronouncing the U in there? Like Rapuano. Yeah. Okay. Rapuano, well, Rapuano. Yeah. All right. Cool. Rolls off the tongue a little. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for helping us with some of our previous guests and seeing that you're a superstar in your own right. It's a, a pleasure to have you on to spotlight your journey and what you're doing. So welcome, welcome, welcome. It's great to see another Mestizo in the house because we are the Mestizo hey. Mafia. Hey, Mestizo <laughs> Mafia. <laughs> thank you for having me on. I, I get really excited when I see podcasts that are, you know, highlighting people of different communities. So that's exciting. Oh, definitely, definitely. So you squad now, you fam. Hey, so uh, Where's my let's kick though squad shirt. Hey, you, hey <laughs> we got merch coming. Twenty twenty one. We're gonna have some shirts. We're working on that. So that plug. all all the guests that have been on before, y'all are gonna get the first line uh, gratis on your boy. So oh I will God, be sending so you sweet. one as soon as we get it all lined up. So uh, <laughs> welcome to the family. I am going to throw it to <laughs> Viva Valentina with our first question out the gate. Let's go. Yeah. So we always want to know, where are you from? And where are your parents from? <laughs> so my mother is from Cebu. She came here when she was 22. My father is Italian. He's from New Britain, Hartford area of Connecticut uh, in the Italian area. I am Filipino, Italian, Turkish, Greek, and Spanish. Ooh. So I was in, here's the timeline. <laughs> I was in <laughs> Connecticut for two years and then we came down to Vegas and I was raised in Vegas. Uh, I lived in New York for three years and then Rona brought me back. Um, but I'm professionally uh, working in LA right now, which is really nice. Short drive over and everything too. And I'm just hanging out with my parents, helping them out as much as I can. Awesome. Ooh. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So let's talk about young Ashley growing up in those Located. various areas. Um, what was your, let's talk about your parents a little bit. What were, how did they meet up? How did this combination to, that became the Mestizo combination of Ashley came together? What were they doing? And, and then, so you came into the picture. Okay. I love telling this story because I think it's a, a very Filipino story that not many people know about or, or kind of hear about. I saw a taste of it when I was watching Lingua Franca by Isabel Sandoval, which was dope on Netflix right now. So um, my mother was in nursing school in the Philippines and my grandma, oh my gosh, she was this lady in the village who would, you know, like write tarot cards for people, like read everyone's tarot cards and write letters for people in America. So long story short, my grandpa, my grandma, was talking to people in America on these like, I don't know, it's like old version of dating apps or whatever, like these mail order bride magazines or something, or these like newspapers that she'd find or whatever. So long story short, my mom pretended, my grandma pretended she was my mom. T, right? T. So my grandma was <laughs> pretending she was my mom, writing these letters to men in America, pretending she was them. And my dad, and her found an agreement and my dad brought my mom over. And that's how that happened. <laughs> yeah. Oh to be a fly on the wall when your grandma broke the news. Like, so Surprise. <laughs> my husband's in America. Here's what you wrote him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Study up. Um, sure. and so, 
my mom was actually when she came to america this is something when i was uh rewriting a new version of lessons with lola this is something i found out like this past year when she came over it was like i don't know in the 80s or something before i was born she was the only person on the flight in like the coach section right like there's like first class and everything so i don't know if there's anybody there but she was like the only person in that part of the cabin and she had no money or anything on her so she came to america literally alone with no money or anything and i that's the experience that i'd want to be a fly on the wall for like i can't even imagine that so so was she was was she just like all right going to america like what have has she ever shared like her feelings on that I mean, you know, there's there's that whole thing of all these. My mom is a nurse as well. So there's that whole like Filipino nurse in in the US and different areas of the world. So I think that aspect didn't scare her as much. But going to a place with a person she doesn't know and everything, I've been trying to like understand that more. You know how Filipino moms can be like they don't really want to share feelings and stuff sometimes. But (laughs) I got to love it. But I've been trying to dive into it more and writing the new version of the show and you know, I found out that there were times when she didn't want to be here and like she tried to go back and she'd meet with like other like titas in Connecticut or something like that, that she would find. And I don't know, like these women would just like take her money and go. I I don't know what the circumstances were, but like she's she's tried. But I mean, like now we have what we have. We like tried to help each other out as best as possible. Like this is our tiny little family here. But I think that whole story of like mail order bride arranged marriage kind of thing is something that's really like unique in in kind of a Filipino sense where like, ah, this is a thing that my elders have given me. This is a thing that's given to me by my family. Like I do everything for my family. Do I just go along with this? This is the path that I've been given. I have a better life in the States now, you know, so there's a lot going on there. That's wild. Yeah. I think that's come up once before when we were talking about um, how, uh, at least back in the older days, um, that, marriages were arranged by the man and the and the mother yeah. and how that was how my grandmother um my great grandmother and my grandpa arranged their marriage with my grandmother and then it was because they had such a strong relationship when she was coming when my great grandmother was coming to America she asked my grandpa to bring one of her daughters or one of his daughters she's like well I'm going to America I don't want to be alone. So I want to take one of my granddaughters. And he had to say yes, because of like that cultural kind of bond. And then that's how my mother made it to America. So that's like, it is a very like, I I wonder how, how old that kind of tradition is. That should be an episode. (laughs) Talk about that. Cause that is like, that is a very strong kind of like cultural thing and, and seeing it kind of manifest in that, in that way is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, completely. Are and you then, oh, sorry, oh. Go, go, go. oh, just just balancing like how how modern things are now and how like, you know, forward thinking and progressive things are and then to have like this this niche group of people with you know like so deeply impacted by these old 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 cultures and traditions and then kind of navigating this has been a thought of mine during this whole summer is navigating like where is the line between embracing old cultures and traditions and men me like making a boundary and setting the way that I want to live my life oh I see you writing something yes <laughs> yeah you <can> hear this. <laughs> I'm like taking notes again. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's our thing. When when there's something that really hits, uh, Tina puts it down. So that's beautiful. It. So yeah. you, you you got one in there. <laughs> so uh, talk about young Ashley growing up and uh, with your parents. Yeah, little baby Ash. Um, if you were to ask my parents about little baby Ash, they would tell you this story about um, when we were in Vegas. I used to always have this like Hello Kitty boombox with me. How freaking Asian is that? Like. <laughs> It's like little Hello Kitty boombox and I'd stand in front of like the banks or wherever I was at. You know, my grandma would always be with me. Like she raised me. She was like glued to my side every second of the day. Um, Me and my Lola. And so we'd be sitting like outside of a bank or something like on, I don't know, in the middle of Vegas. And I'd be like rolling around on the lawn and singing and putting on shows for like random people walking by and everything. And this is a thing I would routinely do is I'd always put on a freaking show wherever I was. Like if it was in a supermarket, I'd be like singing and, and talking into strangers like oh my god who let me do this um (laughs) but yeah that was a thing and uh i remember in like the first or second grade 
we had to do this thing where we like had a picture of ourselves and we like drew an apple or something and then we had to write down like what we wanted to be when we grew up and I wrote like singer or performer or something on there like whatever baby ash wrote and then I scratched it out and I wrote uh lawyer I don't know <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and so in college, it's so funny how this manifested. So in college, I went in originally, uh, I was going to do um, law, like I was on the route to like, you know, do that. And then I, I ended up in the theater and then never walked back out. So it, I, it actually what happened was you wrote it, you crossed it out, you wrote lawyer, and then you like re round, you like went backwards, <laughs> right? Yep. 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 Did you, were you involved in, in any kind of like performance when you were young besides like once you got to school like did you do any theater and or chorus or anything like that oh yeah totally so i was always in some sort of like performing thing whatever it was um whether it be like i i started guitar in like sixth grade or something and then i i joined theater in high school much to my mother's dismay and i it's just always been a thing that never went away so i i enjoy that one constant <laughs> That's so one of awesome. our big yeah. <laughs> is like parents' expectations of what they want you to go to school for versus <laughs> it's always <laughs> doctor, nurse, lawyer, accountant versus like the arts. And now <laughs> we're all in the arts. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's, is that what you're going to get, get to? Oh, sure. Yeah. I can talk about that too. Of course, my, my mom is a nurse. Like, of course, everyone in the family wants me to be a nurse. Like, that's just like the, the given, right? Um, and so when I was in college, I didn't tell them I was majoring in theater until like a, like the last year or something like crazy, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, I'm paying my student loans off myself, so it's okay. Um, and so, yeah, I didn't tell them for the longest time. And it, it was kind of a, a struggle to, you know, get acceptance in that field, especially, oh boy, especially when I went off to New York, like, you know, you have to support your kids. But also my mom's, I think at least once every three days, she'll be like, hey, so uh, this is a state that you can get free college in and you can, I don't know, find something else to major in perhaps. Like I, pharmaceuticals is a great... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, oh my gosh. So when you were growing up, um, did you have like a lot of Filipino community around you? Like, did you really kind of identify as mestiza? I had no idea what that freaking word meant until the longest time. Right? Like, that's that's the thing too. I grew up. Um, my mom would tell me to fill in like the white bubble at school. I'd be. I, I remember having this conversation with my mom. Like, oh hey, what? I don't know what to fill out for this paper. And she's like, oh, you're white. <laughs> exactly. You can only choose one. <laughs> and so, yeah, for the longest time, I, I didn't know what that meant. And I, you know, high school came around. Obviously, I'm Filipino and I know I'm Filipino. And my grandma would like have me around her Filipino friends. I didn't realize how, how, you know, I remember one day coming home from school and my friends were like, why do you talk that way to your grandma? Like, why, why do you like sound different when you talk to your family? And then I realized I have a slight accent when I talk to my grandmother. Um, <laughs> I was like, what is this? So, um, <laughs> oh man. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember when I was in college, I was taking uh, sociology, I think, and we had to do like a privilege walk. And I think that's when I really, I, maybe this is like, I don't know, seven years ago or whatever, but that's when I really was like, oh, okay, I'm different. Let me explore how I'm different and what this means to me and my life and how I can maybe perhaps resonate with other people in this way. Welcome to the show, pal show. <laughs> I couldn't have put it better. Yes, yes. <laughs> Bam, that's, 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 yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. um, oh man. That's yeah, that's crazy. So, uh, what else did you uh, identify and find uh, about out about yourself when you're in college? Because that's when we all become, you know, woke or we leave home and then into your transition to going to New York after college and explaining that away because they didn't know about the theater yet. Or how did that? Well, yeah. and when we finally got to that explanation, yeah, you went from lawyer to theater major yeah. secretly, like a <laughs> subterfuge. I got it. I got to <laughs> tell us the story. Uh, I always wanted to be a spy when I was a kid, so maybe it was just that manifesting in itself. <laughs> um, yes, exactly. Like there were all these shops in Vegas that was like, you know, you know I, like peep shows or whatever, and I'd always be like, "Hey, mom, can you take me to that store? I'm pretty sure they have spy equipment there." No, no, they did not. <laughs> Never, they did. 
<laughs> so um, when I was in high school, I went to a school where I le- uh, I majored in leadership leadership i think that was the just leadership yep that's it and so there i got exposed to things like human rights and and social justice and and all that kind of stuff so in college um and and you know going kind of that law route i was exploring leadership and civic engagement that was my minor for a while and then i don't know school got expensive things happen and so uh i think that's kind of what i wanted to go into is learning more about like human rights and social justice and and finding ways that i could better the community in in that aspect of like lawmaking or or doing whatever i can and and i don't know i didn't i obviously didn't finish that part of schooling (laughs) and so um i in in performing i kept kind of all that stuff so i a lot of the stuff that i do in whatever art thing that i'm doing i love putting an aspect of it where i'm i can educate people or people can learn about social justice or people can learn about like the different or or why are people different or how does that different like how does intersectionality affect people and all that kind of stuff too so Mm -hmm. i i like being able to combine those two worlds and i think for me it helps me make my path clear and like what decisions i make and and what projects i say yes to and what friends i say yes to or like what project partners i say yes to and um yeah and in new york i was able to just meet more people who kind of had that same mission in mind also working with tremendous it's great too because we are like putting ourselves out there for representation and and finding ways that we can, you know, like give this community a voice. And I think that's what it comes down to at the end of the day is amplifying voices and creating change. Um, Yeah. So I guess I accidentally became a performing lawyer. I don't know. Maybe I'll put it. Oh, yeah. Like a performative (laughs) activist or like a cult. Yeah. Like a cultural. uh, I love it. Um, You said cult and I was like, cult leader. What? (laughs) Next on the list after Super Spy, you gotta, you gotta work your way up. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I am curious what was the plan when you went moved to New York and then what was the reality when you moved to New York oh boy <laughs> so, as someone who lived in New York for a little while I I <laughs> if you are, are you in New York right now are you okay <laughs> I was gonna be like well as, as someone who's done that <laughs> Uh, girl, I came here with no money, no money at all. Like, who let me get on a plane? How did I get on the plane with no money? Like, <laughs> well, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> so I was uh, 23. I'm 27 now. I was 23 when I went to New York. A little baby, still a little baby. And so I, th- so this is the whole thing. It's a very romantic memory for me. So I went to the Cannes Film Festival in 2016. And I had a layover in JFK when I was going to Nice. And I, I had this vision, like the plane was landing and then it parted through the clouds and then you saw the city and it was so lovely. And then you get to the airport and you're like, ah, look at all these posters of all these Broadway shows. Home, this is my home. And then uh, it just like was a thing that was in my mind for the longest time. Also a theater professor of mine, I love her so much, Rami Cormel. Um, she said people... I said, whoop, whoop, shout out. Whoop, whoop, yeah, shout out. Uh, she said to me, because uh, I originally planned to go to L.A., and she's like, why are you going to L.A.? People go to L.A. to wait tables. People go to New York to hustle. And uh, I think that stuck with me way too much. I mean, I'm L.A.-based now, so. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, that stuck with me way too much. And so I wasn't prepared at all like I think I just I needed to shed some skin and I think I just needed to grow the hard way for a little bit so I I tell people that New York is like my grad school experience right because I think that's where I grew the most um and I it was just three years of learning stuff the hard way and I think that's the best learning experience I could have ever had so yeah I went there with no money luckily I was I had like I was working on this strip as a model and I got so much back pay like they just owed me months of money and so luckily that funded me in new york for a little bit and i was catering and i had like oh my god dude my first year of you new york i got 13 w-2s wild (laughs) just like whatever job i could find but luckily like i immediately dove into the improv and and you know comedy community and they welcomed me with open arms too oh my gosh guys so i was in goodwill one day in new york in brooklyn and i had not seen a filipino person at all and i was like oh my god i'm in new york where are the filipinos at and so i was like in the dress section at goodwill and this sweet 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 old lola she was just like standing over there and i like kept on like scooting over closer to her like looking at the dresses and i was like hi are you Benoit? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, uh, can I come have dinner with you? I don't know any <laughs> other Filipinos here. <laughs> 
uh, I, I could not bring myself to have the bravery to actually like call her out because she gave me your number and everything, of course. But oh, I wish I did because what a story that would have been. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, uh, so she was like, yes, please let me feed you, child. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yo, let's talk about that actor hustle then, because, you know, after college, it's it's one thing being an actor in, in, in college and then now actually trying to pursue it. What are some of the lessons learned you learned of, uh, you know, getting it? Did you get an agent or how was that? Um, so I think the biggest lesson I learned is just to create your own stuff. And I feel like that's the one lesson that everybody says, too. But like, how many times can I drill it in my head? Uh <laughs> Yeah, I <laughs> in New York, it was a lot of um, I, I, w I had this thing in Vegas where I just I kind of followed people and what they told me to do. And like, I think that comes from possibly Filipino people pleasing and stuff like that. And just like listening to, you know, following what you're being told to do. Like, that's just what you do. Um, and so, yeah, I it was a lot of just, you know, following the curve and, and listening to kind of what other people, I don't know, people around me were doing. And, and I I think New York was me finding my own voice, which I'm very, very thankful for that opportunity to do so. Um, I found, you know, it was like you work during the day, you work at night, you have improv shows in between, like you do an improv show between your two shifts at the restaurant or something. And then like you go to sleep at one and you wake up at seven for your next shift. And it's this like constant state of moving. And I think New York kind of fed that for me, like fed that monster in me. That's like, you gotta never move. You keep, you keep going all the time. If you sleep, then you're gonna cry i don't know <laughs> so yeah it was a lot of that going on and it was just like constant 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 going and at one point i so i met this group of people that i oh my god i love this comedy community at the pit and it was just this like so supportive group of people and one day i was like yo we should like film some of the sketches that we're doing because i mean these are great and this is so fun and that kind of was my intro into self-producing and and like making my own things right like actually being a filmmaker for once and oh my gosh it was so exciting but like i this at this point i think i made three short films four five short films i was i uh i did casting on one i was uh, producing seven at a time and it was like these two months and then I flew off to Canada to do an improv festival at the same time like it was just crazy and all these things kept on happening and that was my experience of kind of like I guess throwing spaghetti at the or on set at the wall and like seeing what <laughs> stuck right <laughs> and so someone actually told me like Ash you are doing way too much this is just like you got to pick something and and just like let it sink and really like put your teeth into it and work on it for a consistent amount of time so that was a lesson that i learned in new york about hustle uh don't do too much of it i guess <laughs> but like it's so like hustle is kind of like a a healthy drug <laughs> that's marketed to you as a healthy drug in a way that people are like you gotta hustle here's 10 youtube videos on how to hustle and get your productivity up so you're not wasting a single second of your day here's how block scheduling works like oh like, my gosh you were but, mixing the asian hustle with the actor hustle with the like <laughs> comedy hustle you had two you had you had three layer hustles so there's too many hustles <laughs> and and just to put some put some filipino guilt on the top of that and, a, and some yeah. sprinkles and you're set <laughs> and your mom's like every weekend you want to come home <laughs> <laughs> oh my god let me like go through my text messages <laughs> <laughs> i lived so in dc for a while after graduation and that was my mom so <laughs> when she's like are you sure you don't want to move back to virginia beach i have your room i made your bed yeah, are you coming home? <laughs> like, so shout out, <laughs> shout out. Oh, yo, okay, so uh, hustle, hustle, hustle. Let's talk about <laughs> uh, if that how the hustle led to, as you said, you started creating for yourself. Uh, was lessons from Lola born during this hustle time in New York? It was, yeah. So, <laughs> so I love clowning um i did a show with Cirque du Soleil in vegas and i love clowning and i love all that has to do with like clown and physical comedy and all of that stuff and um at one point i was even thinking about going to grad school for clown and, and going off to like i don't know the circ you know all that kind of stuff but um so yeah in in new york it was kind of born out of 
a clown skit that I want or a clown sketch that I wanted to do that was just clowny. And then someone sat me down and they're like, okay, so what is this really about? Like, tell me why is your hair sprayed gray and why are you wearing overalls and, and tell me all of these things about this show. And so my grandmother had passed what, like two, two years prior to that. And, um, you know, you're sitting at a table and all of a sudden I love this book called Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, where she talks about how thing like inspiration will come to you. And if you don't like immediately stop whatever you're doing and like write it down, like you're going to be chasing it forever. or It's just like going to go away and it's going to go on to someone else or something. So I was Should sitting at my Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> shut up um, <laughs> so I was sitting at my desk I was working at a hotel at the time and you know like there's nothing to do and so all of a sudden I just start typing this thing out and it 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 started out as like a very like it started out as this thing about this like fetish kinky grandmother and like oh somehow now it's my, about my grandmother so <laughs> there's layers in that probably <laughs> but yeah, so I, I met with a dramaturg and a director. Her name is Carrie Ipema. She was doing um, a uh, Broadway um, One Woman Sex in the City. So that was really cool. We had gotten together through TJ Da, who I had taken a solo show workshop with in Las Vegas, too. So I had already been kind of interested in doing like solo shows and making that own thing for myself, too. Um, <clears throat> And so, yeah, I, I started writing it and then it just like came out of me. And so in New York City, the pit was hosting this thing called Solocom and uh, you can sign up and like do a solo show. So I signed up for a 30 minute slot and I was like, oh, I guess I got to write this thing now. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and then it kind of was born out of that. And then since then, I've done like a 30 minute version of it and an hour long version of it. And we're actually... Um, doing another one right now but rehearsals of course COVID happens so we're taking a, a short break from it as well uh just until like numbers kind of slow down but yeah so the show originally was just like this comedy thing that I wanted to make people laugh because I'm very passionate and I have a strong you know like laughing is important obviously but then it became you know what what does so the show is about my grandma who had dementia right and, and just like a day in her life and I wanted to share the story of like the mail order bride thing also just like her life is is this like fascinating life also like dementia in itself like how do you capture dementia on in in a show and so it became this like teaching people or, or letting people into the world of Filipino culture and opening the door and kind of like giving people a sneak peek on what it looks like to be someone who cares for someone who has dementia or someone who has like this illness and stuff. So yeah, it ended up resonating with more people than I expected it to. And um, it also kind of showed me what I think being Filipino looks like. Cause in the first couple edits, I, I feel like it was all just very stereotypical of what, you know, the Filipino experience is and, and how it feels like to be Filipino. And as I've grown myself into knowing like, okay, this is how I experience this. This is how like I feel about these things it has the script has changed immensely and like I, oh god like how many versions of this thing are there now um but yeah i i look back on the first script into where it is now and i'm like wow i had truly no idea about what it is and now that i've embraced myself more and like accepted who i am as a filipino i think the script has become more organic yeah that is awesome like i am dying to see that that just sounds so beautiful and just just amazing um, I think a lot of us can relate with our Lolas and my Lola had dementia before she, you know, passed and died of old age and all that. But just, just, yeah, that's just, whoo, you got to keep, keep us tuned in when those dates happen so we can promote that and let everybody oh, know sure. so they can check that out. Cause man, that just sounds super dope. Um, yeah, it's so, it's so Filipino, like that honoring even your close relatives, you know, and feeling like this person that I know intimately is so, so important that you should know their story, even as a stranger. I, I feel like that that value system is just, it's such a Filipino thing. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Totally. Yeah. That, that's like a whole other discussion in itself too. So yo, on behalf of us in the show pal show, thank you for sharing that part of you with the world because you are sharing a large part of you and your, your, family experience to the world so that's just just beautiful um so let's flip it to the com comedic aspect of it because you got into comedy so I i'm sure you you use this imbue you exude youthful energy and like i'm <laughs> just hearing you talk you are an actor and you are born entertainer but like how did the comedy side come into the picture 
So uh, when I was growing up, <clears throat> back to baby Ash now, uh, when I was growing up, everyone in my family was sick, right? Like my dad has been sick since I was a kid. Like he's, he has a broken back and like multiple, sur- like he was always just in a hospital or having some sort of surgery. My grandma was always sick. My grandfather, my, my Lolo, he was always sick too. Like he, he died when I was young. My mom was always at a hospital. So I was just surrounded by like sick and sadness as a kid like that was my whole life like I'm like in my childhood home right now like okay this is where the therapist comes in hand um but yeah it it was just you I was growing up in a house where a lot of people were facing some very difficult things and I'm an only child so you know like there there is a certain pressure that comes with that um yeah and, and just I don't know people look at kids as kind of like a form of entertainment I feel sometimes <laughs> like even when I'm around other kids I'm like watch <laughs> them little babies <laughs> and so, yeah and um I I learned that entertainment and making people laugh creates this sense of things are going to be okay and it you know catharsis is such a big thing I wrote my like thesis and about catharsis or something in college when I was a secret theater major and (laughs) yeah it it just allows people to feel and I think laughter and comedy a lot like you know even if it's something that you don't necessarily own up to and you're watching a comedy special and people are talking about you you're gonna laugh even if it's something that's holding on to like it's a secret that you have for yourself it allows you to laugh and feel free just for a moment and so when I was younger my grandma and my dad would go in the kitchen and they'd watch hours and hours of Three Stooges just together and they would just laugh and in watching the in watching Three Stooges my grandma would have these moments of being lucid you know, remember, we're like remembering who she was and where she was. And in that laughter, like, you know, we would always just try to make her laugh. Like, that was the thing. Like, if you made grandma laugh, like, that was the good part of the day. And I think that just kind of translated, you know, like my coping mechanism for life ended up being like a career. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think just learning how, how deeply impactful comedy and and just truly just laughter whether it be like laughing from crying or or allowing yourself to like feel things so much that you're laughing I think that has just made me want to share it with the world in however way I can wow Wow, there yeah for real (laughs) (laughs) okay okay. we only charge you when you you, when you make us cry so So. when when we (laughs) have to explore our childhood that's when you get the bill so Um, copy copy. (laughs) I'll be hitting you up just trust me all right all right we're ready I have, a, I have a follow-up comedy question. So you mentioned that, you know, your, your time in New York and the groups that you found were very supportive. You had excellent experiences. I'm really, I'm really glad to hear that. But I also, you know, a lot of comedy is men. A lot of comedy is white men. Can you speak on your experience getting into comedy as a woman of color? If I had a nickel for every show that I did where I was the only woman and only woman of color there, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was it was pretty interesting. I found myself in a lot of rooms where I, I didn't necessarily find people who, one, looked like me, two, had similar stories, three, resonated with me on, on the things that I wanted to talk about. So it was a lot of, like, me finding what was funny for everyone or not necessarily funny what was just like a common human experience you know Mm -hmm. like how how do people relate to each other and I love that kind of psychology of things like how how do people relate what no matter what experiences we have what privilege you have what kind of life story you have how do people relate to each other in this kind of way and you know is that what comedy is the end of the day just like forcing people to make friends with each other based on like what you resonate with (laughs) Um, but yeah it it was definitely hard at first but I think I it became like a thing of pride for me and I I was really proud like I am really proud to be one of the you know like to make people laugh as a Filipino woman and I have you know like Joe Coy, Ali Wong all these people that I look up to so intensely and then you gosh I'm just like thinking about all those basements that I was in like just with a bunch of white men (laughs) Um, I I remember doing comedy when I was back in Vegas and I just started doing stand-up about like you know what it was like to be just a woman of color in the community or just like a woman of color performer in itself that was something that like I I had to struggle to even swallow it was like I am not the same as everybody else as a performer and that's very difficult to understand um 
but yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, it's just same, same, but different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like uh, playing in regards to going back to the acting side of the house? Uh, do you, be, being that you're a comedian, do you like comedic roles? Do you like the more dramatic roles? Um, can you talk on that? Yeah, I think I like the roles that allow people to experience things more, no matter what it may be. I think it's uh, the important thing is like, what what does what's the mission of the story? Like, what is the story trying to tell you? Is this story trying to like teach you something? Is it trying to educate something? Is it trying to like move people in a certain way? But also, man, making people laugh is just so fun. And I love doing that, too. Um, but yeah, I I personally think I enjoy making people laugh. Uh, and also there's that thing of, you know, do I want to cry today or do I want to laugh today? And most of the times I want to laugh. <laughs> so, yeah. Were you ever cast in a role? Like I've gotten all the stereotypical stuff as an actor. And uh, how did, have you ever had that experience? And did that like eat at your soul? Like it did mine or just how, how did you <laughs> stomach that? And just, do you mind that when that comes across uh, your, your way from your agent or whatever? Yeah, so early on in my career, when I was even back in Vegas, too, there was a film that I was doing where I was playing, you know, this like stereotypical kind of girlfriend thing. Um, I think this question makes me think about boundaries. So that's why I'm talking about this story. And in, in doing that kind of film, um, you know, besides like stereotypical things, it's just I want to work with people who respect me, respect my story, respect my culture, respect my like opinions and beliefs as well. And when I was on this set, it was like the actors weren't being taken care of. The set wasn't safe. And, um, you know, like uh, we filmed this very, very intimate scene with all the windows open, like 10 people on set. Like you don't do that mm -hmm. to people um, even earlier in in this like earlier in the in the panty earlier in the pandemic i got a role where i was able to reach a, a very wide audience with something like a, a super wide audience however i was in these roles where you know like women were often the butt of a joke like yes i got to make so many people laugh and how beautiful is that but like women were specifically the butt of the joke and the the showrunner, not to put out any names or anything, but the showrunner didn't necessarily believe that like women had opinions or anything. And, and I was also like one of the only women of color on set. And the whole experience was just very uncomfortable. So I think in, in those kinds of, of sets where, you know, like there is a trope or there is a, a set of, you know, like disrespect, I am slowly learning on, you know, speaking up for myself and, and, establishing my boundaries and what that means to me if it means like walking away from a big check or walking away from a very 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 like opportunity that could lead to something huge i've started to you know take the l as it comes all right yeah. so new york to la uh, what what pushed you to do that to to make that you know transition <laughs> as, as you had stated you know and we kind of discussed earlier and the differences um let's talk on that for sure yeah so uh in New York, I, I come from Vegas, where literally, like, there's dirt everywhere, and there's, like, trees and stuff, and there's, like, it's it's so flat, and it's so open, right? And New York, I I love New York so, so, so deeply, and I know it, like, definitely transformed me as a person, but there is no sunshine anywhere, so it, like, kind of got to me. I think I was slowly losing my mind from just lacking sunshine, coming from, like, the desert to a concrete jungle, and it's those two, there's nothing in the middle that, like, prepares you for that at all, so... Yeah, but when I was in New York, um, in doing comedy and like focusing on 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 screen things and everything, a lot of industry professionals starting to come up to me and ask me like, "Why are you here, dude? Like, why just go to LA? Like, why do you live here?" Um, which is a, a very blunt question for people to ask you, you know. Um, but I love it; it's fun. Um, but yeah, and so the the mo like multiple people were asking me these questions, and so eventually. Um, and things happened in my personal life. Honestly, I just went through a breakup. That's what it was. And I was like, well, I'm free now. What do I do? I guess I can go somewhere. <laughs> so that's, that's not what happened. Um, and so I was working with like a career coach and a stylist at the time. I love them. Jessica Mir uh, of Inherent Style is amazing. And Jordan Klein of um, Room for Thought uh, are the two people that I was working with at the time. And they're both like, Ash, go to LA. Like, 
on camera stuff and and there's like a bunch of comedy plus my dad was really sick at the time too and he was getting a bunch of surgeries my dad's on the west coast so a lot of things kind of rolled into me coming home and also people are like you know just go home and heal for a little bit like you went through something crazy go home and like get better and and feel better and and then like you can start your career on from there and then i got stuck during the panty so <laughs> but uh, in like as opposed like, to the hellscape that was new york for mm-hmm. a while oh my god right and could you imagine being stuck there like with an ex-boyfriend in a tiny tiny new york apartment during the pandemic when you can't leave your house oh my gosh <laughs> uh but yeah, so I, I am actually like I, I was struggling being in that limbo spot for a while, but now I've kind of learned to embrace it, especially working with tremendous and stuff. And so and, and commuting and everything back and forth. So it's been good. But yeah, New York to L.A. was, uh, I think, just listening to what I really wanted in life and being honest with myself about, you know, like. Here, here's the thing. I was so nervous when I was thinking about leaving New York. I was like, it was all other people's thoughts, you know, like, oh, what are people going to think of me? Are people going to think that I failed in New York? Are people going to, th- I was so, so, so nervous that people would think I'm a failure. I would like just sit up at night crying and thinking about this, but I couldn't stay there any longer. You know, like you have to listen to your heart at some point and you have to go, oh my God, where the sunshine is. And, um, <laughs> I remember when I was leaving to New York, I had a party in Vegas. I had goodbye Ash Bash, gotta love a name. And so someone was like, you're never going to make it in New York. You're going to be a failure. I don't know why you're going out there. And they, oh my God, his like, it's like imprinted in my mind and it's never going to leave my mind. <laughs> but I let it at your like, party. Right. Right. So uh, I'm like, um, we will fight. Them. I know. I'm like straight <laughs> up. Filipino <laughs> fam is coming at you. Don't <laughs> talk to my Sorry. cousin like that. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, uh, what in the high school bully special? Like what? what? How many sacred rules have you broken with this? Like party foul. <laughs> Her <But> God, honestly. <laughs> You're like cursing the ship as it's pulling out of harbor. Ah, ooh. I bet it was I'm a hell. So- I bet it was a hell of a spite inspiration, though, right? Oh, 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 yes, it was. So it fueled me very much so in a good way, and then it fueled me in a bad way, and then it fueled me in a good way again. I think about it's like. <laughs> It has its turns. I, I journal about it a lot. Um, but yeah, and I, I just like that voice kept on like repeating in my mind of like, you know, just just stay here and stick it out and don't let people think you're a failure. But I like I I have this thing where I'm trying to internalize my accomplishments more and really like own up to what I've done and let it be like celebrate myself. And in celebrating myself, I am allowing myself to be honest about who I am and where I come from and what I experience. Yeah. And so Leaving New York was just a process of swallowing what I thought was pride and just stubbornness and shoving that guy's voice into a closet and hitting it with a bat several times and then just living my true self. It's, I mean, it sounds like, God, that's such a fucked up thing to say. But <laughs> like you, you I'm mad. as you're like listing all of the things that you have done in New York, I was like, damn. Yeah. And you see that and I'm like, I just, <laughs> from the start and then like to not even, after after accomplishing all that and then having like very legitimate reasons to then leave new york where like, it's literally to, to a next look. step it's not like you're like, like running right. away with your tail between your legs like it's legitimately a like, next step for you but to all have that like yeah like oh well, well, if i leave then i'm failing like man oh yeah Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I also had it, but it wasn't just him though. That was the funny part is Las Vegas is one of those towns where people leave and they come back. Like that's the thing about Nevada is like you leave and you come back. Maybe it's like a hometown thing in general where people, you know, they try to leave and they just keep on coming back. And so even like, but you can never leave. Yes. That's the line. That's a song lyric. Yes. (laughs) Um, And sorry, the song's stuck in my head now. Even like, (laughs) other people that I had dated or other people in my circles and they were like, you know, you can, you're not going to make it. It it was, it was that dichotomy of like, you know, you're not going to make it. Don't go or come back, please. We need you here. You need to be here. So it was so interesting navigating those two very different trains of thought, but yeah, here I am now. (laughs) Wild, wild. Yeah. I'm (laughs) Gonna be all heated, all right? <laughs> like I, I feel that I relate to that. <laughs> like, what's something that you missed from the West Coast? 
that you're like hype that you're back to. Girl, literally, I can like, (laughs) if you just, if you just take the sun and like shoot it into my veins, that's all I needed. I just needed that. Also like trees. I miss trees a lot. (laughs) (laughs) So how, what, what's, what is the future like? I mean, we know where you've kind of been with, isn't that the question of the day? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) On this podcast, I expect you to know, right? Yeah. (laughs) Lay out the next five years. <laughs> we will critique as necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, where's that other guy? I'd, like, honestly, I need his opinions. <laughs> Have you guys seen the video of the, it's like a, a, a Filipino parody where she calls CVS and she's like, uh, can I inquire about the boxing? about the boxing and she's like we don't do boxing here we don't do gift wrapping and no the boxing the COVID-19 boxing. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm thinking of. Um, oh, now I got it. Yeah, so <laughs> depending on, you know, how things work out, when things are going to be, I'm I'm so thankful about advancements in technology right now because, like, I, I've auditioned for, like, HBO and Disney and all these, like, really, really, really great, exciting things from this room, this <laughs> very room, and it's it's great. I'm so thankful. Like, I can film things here, and it's, you know, like, embracing what you can do on your own, in your own space. And I, I think that's very exciting now. So uh, it's so funny because, so last night I was editing something that Jeremiah had sent me, uh, an article that he had wrote. So I had to read it several times. And it was this article about like, it was for Collective Hustle. And it's this article about him and how he got into the business and, you know, like his mentorship and everything too. And I was just so inspired by it. And I, I sat and I was just like writing through my goals and everything and what I wanted to accomplish for 2021. Cause I think beforehand I was, so vague in the things that I wanted and needed in life because I truly didn't know because I wasn't living authentically like I had so much work to do and so this year I spent the whole freaking year doing therapy and in working on my mental health and really figuring out who I am and what it means to be me and and being okay with that like I am okay with who I am like I know I'm enough I know I'm whole and that's so like radical for me to say in itself but allowing myself to experience that and that growth now I feel like I can do the other stuff like so many doors have opened now that I know who I am and I've accepted myself for all I am too. So now I, I would love to, so the thing, let me pull out my list of things that I'm trying to do for the next year. Oh, um, I am I'm, I'm a huge new, like new year's le- new year's uh, list junkie. I make like 150 resolutions. Like, Oh my God. Can you share that. one too? Yeah. That's <laughs> her book. Right? I have my book. I'm like, I yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> but uh certain things I wanted to get done this year is I have I've been writing so much and for some reason I'm like I I can make a short film and all these things are things that I've done in the past but I'm so scared to put my personal voice out there and that's like way scarier than being on tv for some reason and so I would love to just finish a short like write it out just write it and then let it be in the world and if it's shitty it's gonna be shitty can I say the word shitty on this one? You can absolutely. Great. Okay. Great. Shitty. Uh, so yeah, I I just the more things I crank out, the know it. I I know it'll get better along the way too. So I think I just want to embrace uh, making things and knowing that they're not going to be great, and that's okay too. And at that's least you know hard. I made it. That's hard, and that's it's so a, hard. Like, that's such a mature type thing way to be thinking about it and about this process that you were you are now on and that you were you were going to go through. Yeah. 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 Completely. Completely. And I'm I'm so thankful I like did the work so I can get to that point of finally thinking in mature thoughts. Um, and yeah, it's for everyone. <laughs> yes. Yes. And so another thing, just an overall plan that I have for this year is just to be okay with being my authentic self and things. Because I noticed whenever I speak or whenever I do things, it's very to the point. Like it's proper Filipino, and and you know, like I am I'm a good person. Listen to me. Sign my email off. I don't know what that was, <laughs> but yeah, I, I just want to be okay with being who I am, whether it be like, you know, being weird and, 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 you know, like, I don't know, quirky is a bad word, but quirky, let's say that for now. Or like, even like owning up to me being in like the LGBTQ community or owning up to, you know, X, Y, Z, everything that's a part of me, I want to celebrate it and really own it, whether that be in making music because I'm Filipino or you know, like writing the script or, or auditioning for more things, or I think I just want to 
let myself celebrate myself and see how that looks organically and see how that plays out organically. Because I do think when you finally accept yourself, doors open for you. And uh, I, I'm big on telling people that too. Like I, I am, I am healthy. I attract healthy. What does healthy look like in my life now? Whether that be, you know, like, like we just talked about saying no to certain things or saying yes to certain things and creating boundaries with people and places and things and shows and all that stuff too. So yeah. Uh, so my 2021 back to the question of the day, uh, I guess pre vaccine before vaccine, whatever vaccine I'm going to cry vaccine uh stimulus sorry i'm just saying keywords now put this all on the youtube tag uh, <laughs> um yeah so uh i i'm looking so oh my gosh so during the the pandemic i was actually super 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 thankful to get signed with an agent i don't know how that happened and i'm so thankful for it but like having an agent during a pandemic like that's such a weird statement to say when so many bad things are happening but like you find goodness in it which uh, is a lot of filipino guilt there um but yeah so I think it's just continuing to be diligent and be dedicated to myself and just make myself proud in whatever I, I do. Yeah. Beautiful. Can I, can I, I hear it. one of yours now? Oh, one of mine. Gosh. One of our friends, Philip, who was recently on the podcast too, he always says that what is meant for you is meant for you. And, and sometimes like just, just kind of accepting that and, and, and trusting that is like, um, I'll give you. Here. I'll give you. I'll give you three. Uh, be kinder to myself, which I tell her that. She every tells day. me that literally every day. Um, be open and honest with myself, and see a dentist. I love all of these. Very practical. <laughs> very very good things. <laughs> I like to balance my practical with my uh, inspirational. Yeah. <laughs> there was a thing I saw on Twitter where it said uh, "dental health" and "dental health," and it was like dental and mental health coming together. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, that's my list. The dentist? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I stopped scheduling my own dental appointments, you know, when my mom stopped. So it was like. <laughs> I don't know. So, so I don't mine, mine is just get sponsors. <laughs> As the producer of buying this, like, we need sponsors. Sponsors, hey, holla. Hey, hey. <laughs> Any dentists want to hit us up? Oh, my yeah. God. No. <laughs> Smile hey. Direct Club, come at me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, uh, man, this is just you. I love your attitude and your vibe and your energy from all of this. Um, your, your story is great. And like, I, I'm dying to see Lessons uh, to Lola from Lola, whichever the title. Lessons from Lola, Lessons to Lola. I can't remember. Lessons with Lola. Yes. With Lola. Uh, please keep us posted when that drops and keep us uh, alert to your journey um, because you're still in the midst of it. And, you know, we'd love to support you and celebrate you as you uh, go along with that. Um, I just think it's great. And I love your attitude after, you know, you came out of that relationship and, and now uh, you're transitioning and you're moving forward uh, despite the pandemic and all that, that is going on. Your attitude is just beautiful and we need to be more like that. All of us. And uh, you're part of the Macizo squad, man. You're a fam now. So Mestizo squad. please keep us, uh, you know, uh, up to date with what's going on. So oh, uh, sure. I'm going to throw it to Kat with our last question that we like to throw at y'all because we are the Nerds of Color. Go ahead, Kat. Hey. Nerds of Color. So we have our nerd check. What nerdy thing are you super into? You don't have to be an expert, but you could give a TED talk on this. Mm -hmm. What is it? Uh, <laughs> I was thinking Thank about this in the shower. Yeah, the more specific, the better. Mm -hmm. I'm really into sharks. Like, really, really, really into sharks. I love sharks so deeply. Like, when I was a kid, I wanted to be, uh, you know, a marine biologist. And then, oh my god, when I was in college, I asked my counselor if I could be a marine biologist, and she laughed at me because I live in a desert. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah sharks it's it's sharks and i always watch shark week also that was like a thing i remember watching shark week and be like i'm gonna be a woman of color comedian on shark week just watch me <laughs> shark week yo sponsor this shark week. Shark week. Yes. i would i would watch that i would get cable to watch you on shark week what a compliment honestly also in my brain forever now <laughs> what's your favorite kind of shark uh oh i love whale sharks just because they're big and they're like you know just chilling in the ocean not really like doing too much they're just kind of there uh just there. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Cute little like lemon sharks too, and then like bull sharks that will like mess your day up. Um, but you know, I love all my babies equally. I can't never, I, I cannot choose one child. That's fair. That's fair. My favorite's a uh, 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 the treasure shark mm-hmm. with the long tail. I like mm-hmm. the, long, the long, the long tail. Oh, the, they have the top tail because they're mm-hmm. hills, and then <laughs> I'm describing it for the audience. <laughs> they have a long <laughs> then bottom tail and it's just charming i love that so much we could talk about sharks forever i'd be so happy to- <laughs> i do love sharks yes i was i was heartbroken when universal studios got rid of the jaws right i gotta tell you that was it was a big blow to me personally me as a person yeah <laughs> I, yes, I feel that. Uh, I, I love the part where uh, you're on the studio tour. Spoilers for the studio tour, everyone. When you're on the studio tour and the shark comes out, I remember everyone was like, ah, and I was like, oh. <laughs> opposite way. <laughs> Animatronics and sharks? Oh, this is the best. Come at me. Yes. Well, even better than a shark is a robot shark. <sighs> <laughs> yes, we would subscribe to your TED Talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Put us on your mailing list for there. Yeah. Yo, Sharknado 10, like, holla at me. <laughs> uh, what up, Ian? I would gladly. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so dope. I love it. Yo, oh, Ash, I, uh, man. Thank you. This has been a blast. Yeah. yeah. This has been so fun. I keep on staring at your wall because there's so much to look at, and it makes me so happy every time <laughs> I, like, glance over. Nerd, I'm I'm super nerd. When, when, yo, I'm trying to come out to Vegas once we have this vaccine. Cause um, no, I got you. I got I got mad people there. So yeah, we got to get up and uh, introduce my boy Edwin San Juan, who is our first episode guest. Who's I don't know if you're familiar with him as a comedian. He is hilarious. And uh, my, but yeah, man, we're gonna have to connect, especially you know Vegas, LA. When we have a vaccine, like I've got to do sure. a lot of movement because you know I'm a filmmaker, actor too, and y'all in the same hustle. You you are a delight. You have a great spirit, and you're you're gonna do big things. And I'm just delighted to have you on along with Ate's man. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. This has been so fun, guys. Thanks for having me on. This is truly like a blast. Just chatting it up with you. Please hit me up, and let's just like talk afterwards. Oh, yeah. 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 You squad now, Mestizo Mafia. Come squad. on, <laughs> gang, gang, in a gang, gang. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard that phrase before. It's my favorite phrase now ever. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Cine gang gang. Yeah. Yes. Oh my god. Tattoo it on my back in old English font, please. Like, oh my god. Yo, yes. Amazing. You're gonna have a bunch of merch. I'm working on it. That's why I like I, I don't know if the Ates realize this. That's why I go like Le- the Lachon ladies, the Tocino Terminator, Babinka Boys. Like I, I have like well, I just thought you like Filipino streetwear yeah, line. And- I didn't know that this was going anywhere. I just thought I will buy everything. I love it. It's great. But Yo. every time you add one, we're like, oh, that one's new. <laughs> <laughs> Filipino streetwear. We coming with it. Yo, <laughs> telling you. I got you. <laughs> right. I love that so much. Ashley, where can people find you and keep up with your awesome projects? Yeah. <laughs> You can, I don't know why that was so funny to me because I wanted to make a pun and then I couldn't make a pun because I'm still thinking of Filipino streetwear. Uh, you can find me on the internet. Um, I am at Rapuano Ashley on everything and uh, I'm at AshleyRapuano.com. <laughs> also, like, I keep on thinking of Filipino streetwear. I cannot wait to see this stuff. Uh, but yes, if you Google my name, I'm I'm the only one out there. There's one other in Connecticut, one other Ashley Rapuano in Connecticut. I think we're secretly related, but... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. One. Yeah, so if you guys fight, you got to Highlander it out. Like, if you need <laughs> I don't make those sticks. I got my sticks. Yes, I do. You. <laughs> Ashley Rapano. <laughs> Yo, so, Salama, this was a true pleasure. Uh, would love to have you back anytime, Ashley. Appreciate it. Yes, yes, yes. And this time I will be prepared with Boba. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same, same. <laughs> yes, <laughs> little boba date between the yes, Mestizo family. I love it. <laughs> there we go. All right. 
Yo, no, I just I love your spirit. You just make me smile. Just some of your oh, that makes me so happy. Everything like as a filmmaker, you know, like yo, if I I'm working on a bunch of different film projects too as well because that's like my passion. And as an actor, I love yo. That. If I find myself out that way, yo, I gotta cast you in something because you're bananas. You're just you're. Oh yeah, I got you. I will come to you. <laughs> hey. Post pandemic, post panic. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Oh Yo, thank you so much, Ash. Man, Absolutely. let definitely keep in touch. Holla anytime. Anything you got going? Oh, for sure. Yeah, Miss Lisa Fam, you're stuck with me now. I mean, oh, like, yeah. Filipino family never leaves. <laughs> Yo, I'm your Kuya <laughs> now. Kuya P. Anytime, yes. Ash. For sure. All right, much love, girl. Have a good one. It's a pleasure. We're gonna talk about you now. <laughs> yes, thank you for the best day ever. Honestly, oh, this was such a blast. You. I am. Um, I'm now going to take my mom to Seafood City. Oh, oh nice. like a proper Filipino. Thank yeah, you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Take I care. I guess I'll uh, I'll leave now. Okay. <laughs> uh, I miss you already. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> you can stay. <laughs> oh no! Don't say that to me because I'll stay forever. <laughs> I won't. Look, okay, I'm leaving now. And bye. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. I knew that she was a Libra. I knew it. She is oh. awesome. Yo, <clears throat> boom, there you go, Miss Ashley Rapuanu, amazing actor, comedian, writer. Uh, like, I'm dying to see Lessons to Lola and all of that. Just, just such a great spirit, y'all. She was so cute. I loved having her on. She was so much fun. Mm -hmm. I just, I really enjoyed myself. There was, there was so many things that just like resonated with me. And I kept on like, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And it's because she's a Libra. <laughs> I related to that. Uh, Viva is a Libra, if you could not tell. <clears throat> and I love all of you other Libras out there. Um, but it was it was just such, like, there's so much, like, resonance. I had to be like, what is your sign? I, like, <laughs> girl. And <laughs> sorry. <laughs> For all you astrology, um, uh, um, Nerds, what astrology they, nerds. They do, when you don't believe your skeptics, uh, skeptics oh, for all yeah, you yeah. astrology skeptics. <laughs> um, Libra love is real, <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was just awesome. It was awesome um, hearing about her her journey. Um, just the the things that really um, resonated with me was was um, how she was saying to like get out there and shed your skin, and how she had to learn the hard way and that is kind of the hard lesson to to tell yourself to learn is is to kind of accept that and be like okay now i have to learn the hard way yeah. um so i just i felt like that was very just a, a very mature way of thinking about it um and <laughs> yeah 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 um and then and then her journey, especially this year alone, of um, of coming back to herself and loving herself and internalizing your success. That is something that like I needed to hear. I think everybody needs to hear, especially now that like, we're recording this right before the new year. And if that if if there is any message from this particular recording of Show Pow Show, it's to be kind to yourself internalize your success and own it oh because she i mean really she didn't say it in as many words but it was that it's that reoccurring imposter syndrome right mm -hmm. where she was yeah. she was letting those those doubtful naysayers mm -hmm. to some extent kind of define her success when objectively from an outside perspective mm -hmm. like damn girl you're getting it you know so it's amazing to think that like when you look at these people who are out there doing it, like they're just as insecure as anybody else, right? Exactly, exactly. Uh, she was born a star, like from her yeah. stories as a kid and just and her family story, which is part of that Filipino fabric that we haven't discussed yet. But again, and I agree with that you guys said it, that should be an episode in itself, the whole mail order type situation. Yeah. Um, but they found love and just, and that 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 already out the gate, I was like, oh, I can't wait to see this Lessons to Lola uh, play that she puts on because just that story alone, there is gold. And then just growing up in Vegas and then just 
being a born entertainer. You could see it and just hear and feel the vibe through this web camera. Like she has that it, which was just so beautiful. And then she pursued it, even though, and then we did the whole Filipino parent thing. They, mm-hmm. but she played it dope though. She like, she yeah. went in as a lawyer. So that was a cool part of the story. And she still pursued her dream. And then she, you know, got out of it and went to, you know, to, you know, did we ever figure out how she settled on that with her mom? I don't know if we got that or if we just got lost in the sauce. She, she said that she waited until it was like her senior year to break the news. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, so, and they know. just accepted it. For I mean, at that point, what you going to do? She got three, <laughs> three and a half years in. Like, yeah. you know, the only thing that they want more, like, that they want you to be successful, but they also don't want to be wasting money. So, like, <laughs> they have yeah. to just kind of take it at that point. And so, yeah, she like, just continued on with her. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just. But I like that, too. Her... Uh, it was uh, an, an expression of her. Her art is, is an expression of her wanting to change the world. It started with law and oh, social yeah. justice. And now she's found a way to do that, but through art. Yeah. And oh, totally. Oh, yes, that. Yeah, 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 you're right. And she, that, oh, yeah, there was a lot of those <laughs> nuggets too that were great. And of her way of dealing, what she was dealing with, like she said, she had a lot of family members that were sick and this was just mm-hmm. her way to cope and, oh man, yes. Those were great nuggets from that too. And uh, and then doing it through her art, I yeah, just just her spirit was just. Don't you feel like we just got blessed by this amazing spirit? Thank like you. yo, I love it. Like her energy it on its own. Like Ashley, thank you for bringing your energy yes, on to us and sharing it with us. Just can't wait to have you back. She's part of the Ate clan now. Oh yeah, you know? absolutely. Can't wait yes. to cry in a club bathroom with you. Yeah, absolutely. Post pandemic, post pandemic, go. Out there. <laughs> yeah, and like young, don't you all want y'all? I saw the heat when she was telling about the story with the New York and the the ex. Like, I was ready to gang up too. Y'all ready to crew up? Like, if <laughs> like, she ever identifies and gives us that name, we about to crew oh, up man. and we about to handle That's- business for you, Ash, because that was wrong. That's- that was dirty. dirty. We about to handle. Bi- you you feel me? <laughs> yeah, Kuya P's gonna be the driver. Yo, yo, the back. yo. yo. Let us know <laughs> I'm bringing the blammy pack. Black oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't do our girl Ash like that. That was greasy, son. Yo. Anyway. Mm-hmm. But uh, that was truly a pleasure. And she's such a delight. Can't wait to have her on. And can't wait to just follow her journey. Just just beautiful uh, in, in every way with her spirit. So that was amazing. Um, let's, let's tell them how they can keep on following us and bringing on other amazing spirits of uh, Filipino persuasion. Because we are the show Pal Show. Sounds good. I am Viva Valentina, and you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at viva.valentina. And on Twitter and chess.com, follow me at Viva Valentina XO. And I am Cataphoric. You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Uh, I also run the Show Pow Show TikTok. And if you want a little bit more behind the scenes action, you can follow us on Patreon, support the show, and to see a little bit behind the uh, behind the scenes footage, or you can just buy us a coffee. Hey, please do follow the amazing Ates. They are wonderful. I love them. The Lechon ladies in the house. And we're gonna get that Filipino streetwear set up because yeah, that been that's a pet project that I've been working on. So yeah, yeah, we're gonna have merch, all of that. And uh, yeah, come come support that because we're going to have that pumping soon. Soon. I promise y'all. All right. I am Kuya P, a.k.a. Patrick Michael Strange. You can follow me at Strange since 1977 and at Temple Far East. You can follow me at the NRW at New Release Wednesday because that's our big pop culture sphere. And for POC specific, POC specific content, follow us at the Nerds of Color, our granddaddy site for the show, pal show. We love y'all. Mahakita. Salamat. We out of here. Till next time, y'all. Deuces.
Oh, my God.